So good evening. My name is Aaron Chafee. I am the uh, National Account Manager for Artex Tile and Stone Installation Systems. We have today a presentation for you on substrate preparation for floors and walls to receive tile. Presenting today, we'll have a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation uh, that's going to be done by Mark Penine. Mark is our uh, manager of technical for Artex Tile and Stone Installation Systems. He's based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And for our live demonstrations, we'll have William White, who is our field marketing specialist for the Western US. Uh, we appreciate you joining us today. And Mark, if you're ready, I'm going to get ready to fire this up. Yes, I am. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, everyone, for taking time out of your evening uh, to spend some uh, time with the uh, Artex group here to talk about some uh, substrate preparation materials. We're going to cover primers, uh, some substrate prep products, as well as we're going to conduct a couple live demonstrations. Moving into primers, what is the reason for priming? What is the main purpose a primer achieves for us uh, when we're installing either mortars or self-leveling products? There are two major reasons. The first one is a primer acts as a temporary sealer, which prevent pore substrates from drawing moisture out of the product. This helps extend the working time of the product, and it also allows that self-leveling product or mortar to gain full strength. The second reason is the primer is a bonding agent. This allows the self-leveling or tile mortar to bond to the substrate that it typically would not be able to bond to without a primer. Artex has three primers in their tile portfolio. The first product I'm going to discuss is Artex P51, which is an acrylic primer used for porous substrates. The recommended application is to scrub the P51 into the substrate with a standing push broom. If there is any dust on the surface, this will incorporate the dust into the primer and scrub it into the surface. It won't just lay on the surface as if you were using a paint roller. You could roll over that dust and the primer would never bond properly to the substrate. So scrubbing it in with the push broom actually will incorporate, incorporate any of that dust and scrub it into the surface. P51 it has three different dilution rates for three different applications. For standard absorbing concrete, we want to mix it one to one with water. For very porous substrates like gypsum, we recommend a double priming application. That is first priming three to one, three parts water, to one part P51. That's going to dry very quickly. It's going to close up the pores of the gypsum. And then we're going to go back and we're going to do a one to one. And for plywood substrates, we're going to pour the P51 directly out of the bottle undiluted. For non pore substrates, we recommend Artex P82. It's a two component waterborne epoxy primer for non pore substrates. There's a part A and a part B. You're going to get approximately one hour pot life once you mix those two products together. So now you have a chemical reaction taking place. You have to be aware of that. So you get the primer done. You want to roll it out with a paint roller. And we say thinner is a winner. This product will get great coverage from six to 700 square feet per unit. The drying time is three hours to 24 hours. What that means is you have to wait three hours before installing your self-leveling product or your mortar. But once that three hours has passed, you have to have that mortar or self-leveling product installed within 24 hours. So Mark, I think it's a good time to let everybody know. We have Kristen Blanchard, who's one of our sales professionals from the West Coast here for Artex. He's manning our Q&A chat room. And so, Chris, do we have any questions that have come up so far? Hey, everybody. Uh, at this point, there's no questions on the products. It looks like there's a couple people who maybe aren't seeing the, dis the display. So if that's you, go ahead and log out and log back in. 
while we're in here during questions and uh, let me know in Q&A if you can see the screen again. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. You bet. And for both porous as well as non-porous substrates, we have a product called Artex P4. P4 is a pre-mixed, rapid-drying, multi-purpose primer. This one component ready-to-use primer has sand in the product itself. This gives the surface a nice textured finish to bond either your towel mortar to or your self-leveling products. It dries very quickly within 30 minutes. It's great for towel over towel applications, both for direct bonding of mortars as well as pouring a self-leveling product in its interior and exterior. Next, please. Real quick, we have one question here from Kevin Ford. Uh, will the cementitious self-leveler bond to the epoxy primer? Absolutely, yes. P4 has a nice bright white color as you're applying it so you can see if there's any spots that you may have missed. Uh, that's one of the big advantages of this product. Um, there's also minimum drips and splashes with this product. It has a nice consistency, very easy to apply with a, again with a standing paint roller as you can see in the picture. And again, very important, this product, this primer is a primer that can be used exterior. So if you have an existing towel application outside, you can use this over an existing towel application to give you a nice textured surface to either towel directly over it or um, if you want to do some type of skim coating before you have to do some tiling, uh, that's possible as well with uh, some of our patching and rendering products. Um, so this is a product that can be used both interior as well as exterior. Okay, let's move into substrate preparation products. The first product we're gonna discuss is a trowel applied product and it's called Artex AM100. It's actually one of my favorite products in the whole Artex talent stone portfolio. Uh, this is a cement-based smoothing, patching, screeding, as well as um, if you have a, um, if you have a substrate that is um, pitched the wrong direction, it's great for sloping, so um, it can do a variety of things for both vertical as well as horizontal applications. It has excellent slump, slump and sag resistance uh, for both floor and walls. It can be applied from a quarter of an inch all the way up to an inch and a quarter. Tiles can be installed as quick as two hours. It's great for preparing swimming pools both floor and wall on swimming pools. If they're out a little bit, you need to bring it into specification, quarter inch to a half inch, perfect for that. It's great for ramping patios and decks. And it's also used as a brown coat for our stone veneer applications. Any questions on Artex AM100? At the moment, I do not have anything pending. Okay. So let's move into self-leveling. Self-leveling has become a has become very necessary as the towels have become much larger in the industry, especially with these gauge porcelain towel panels. Self-leveling will minimize the effort and repairs due to undulated surfaces. Artex Liquid Backer Board, or LBB, as many refer to it in the industry, is a self-leveling underlayment for interior wood and concrete surfaces. No lath mess required over wood. It has a very high polymer content, which helps with its flexibility. You can walk on it in as early as two to three hours and start installing moisture insensitive towel in six hours. It installs from a feather edge up to an inch and a quarter. It's great for encapsulating electric floor heating systems. 
Just to finish up on liquid backboard, it also gets 32 and a half square feet at a quarter of an inch or 65 square feet at an eighth, and it has a 3000 PSI compressive strength. Artex TL1000 is an option for leveling concrete and cementitious terrazzo. This product is actually the perfect product for large commercial projects. It's an, our economical self-leveling product for massive square foot coverage. You can walk on it in 45, four to five hours, and you can start installing towel between six and eight hours. You're gonna get about 25 square feet at a quarter of an inch out of a 50 pound bag. TL1400 is a high flow self-leveling underlayment designed specifically for fast floor leveling. It's also great for commercial jobs, but also it's great for residential as well. It can be installed on concrete, ceramic tile, and non-water soluble adhesive residue. Again, you can walk on this product in two to three hours, set towel in six to eight hours, and this product also goes from a quarter of an inch up to an inch and a quarter. 25 square feet out of a 50 pound bag as well. We have Our, a question, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. What is the minimum thickness of subfloor required for liquid backer board? It is five eighths of an inch tongue and groove when it's over 16 inch on centers. If it's 19.2, it has to be three quarters of an inch tongue and groove. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question, can liquid backer board be used over OSB? And if so, what primer? Yes, um, as long as it's an exterior grade OSB and we would prime it with Artex P51 undiluted or Artex P4. If you're using P4, it's limited to only a half inch thick in application. If you have to go over a half of an inch thick, then you're going to want to use P51 undiluted. Okay, let's take a look at Artex TL2000. Um, this is a fiber reinforced self-leveling underlayment for wood subfloors and for re repairing above grade gypsum substrates. So when installed up to an eighth of an inch, tiles can be installed within 24 hours for installation thicknesses from an eighth, this, I'm sorry, this product installs from an eighth of an inch all the way up to an inch and a quarter. And it can be extended when you add pea gravel up to two inches. It's very strong. It has a 6,000 PSI compressive strength, and you're going to get 25 square feet at a quarter of an inch out of a 50 pound bag. We have a question, Mark. Mm -hmm. How thick does the liquid backer board need to be to, to be used as backer board? So the typical installation for liquid backer board would be a quarter of an inch. So what we say is the highest, uh, an eighth of an inch over the highest point on the floor, which is gonna average about a quarter of an inch over the whole floor. TL2000 is also the recommended product for encapsulating in-floor hydronic heat tubing. Whenever you're pouring over hydronic heat tubing, just make sure that you pour at least a quarter of an inch over the tubing. One more question for liquid backer board, Mark. Yeah. Is there a minimum thickness for liquid backer board over a wood substrate? Um, I, it's a, I would, like I said, it's an eighth of an inch over the highest point on that floor. The last product is Artex K60 
Artitex. This is a very unique product. Um, this is a two component smoothing product that bonds to a variety of substrates, concrete, wood, terrazzo, ceramic towel, steel, and epoxy coatings. There's no primer and no water needed. You just mix the jug of the liquid with the 35 pound bag of the potter and you're ready to smooth floors out. The maximum thickness of this product is a half of an inch. This is not a product you would use if you had to pour a lot of material to bring a floor into level. This is more of a smoothing product and it's great for that application. So let's take some more questions. Give them a moment to catch up. At the moment, okay. there is nothing pending. No problem. Take that back. Can we use liquid backer board as a skim coat? No, I would not recommend it. An eighth of an inch would be the minimum thickness I would install a liquid backer board at. Now, K60 would be a product that could be used as a skim coat. So we're gonna... what application would K60, in what application would need to be primed before K60? Um, really, most applications do not require a primer for K60. If you're going over an epoxy coating, um, it would also help to prime with P82, but it's not necessary in every case. That would be um, evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. No more Any other questions, Chris? Oh, let's move ahead. Good evening. My name is William White, and I'm the Field Marketing Specialist for Arctic Style and Selling Installation Systems. Tonight, I'm going to be walking you through the installation of a couple of our different substrate preparation products. We're going to start out with one of Mark Penine's favorite and my favorite, Arctic's AM100. So what we have here is a ramp where we're going to ramp up from its minimum thickness out to zero here up to an inch and a quarter and then we're actually going to take this material vertical we're at the minimum thickness and we're going to go out to an inch and a quarter now any of you that are familiar with mud work knows that this installation would be very challenging with a regular mud so we already have our AM100 mixed up here. So what I like to do is I actually like to burn a coat in. So I just take the AM100 and scratch it into the surface. You can hear that this is a heavy aggregate product, which is how it enables it to go up to that maximum of an inch and a quarter. So once I have a good coat burned or scratched into that surface, Now I can simply add some more material. So notice as I start to go up this wall, the material will hang there.
So when I'm doing a vertical surface, I'll let that sit for just a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and apply the material that we're going to be using to make our ramp. While you do that, William, we have two questions about AM100. Awesome. What do we got? From Kevin Ford. Can AM, so AM100 can go down to zero thickness? So AM100 can be, so we say a minimum thickness of a quarter inch. This is a very heavy aggregate product. So we do have feathering products, typically for tile installations. As you can see here, I'm gonna finish this out to, you know, a zero, basically the thickness of the aggregate of the product. So, Thank yeah. you. The next question from Anonymous, should the wall be wet first? Oh, so that's one of the beautiful things of AM100. It does not require pre-priming. It does not require any metal lath. So I stuck that up directly to a concrete substrate. That's the only thing that it requires is that it be a concrete substrate. So in this situation, we have a piece of backer board. Um, if it was incredibly porous or dry, we could parge that surface or christen it with a little bit of uh, you know, damp sponge, but it's not, it's not necessary as long as I burn a coat in or key it into the substrate and get. One more question. I think you just touched on this from Chris Nardone. What is the minimum thickness for AM100? Uh, so our technical data sheet says the minimum thickness for AM100 is going to be a quarter of an inch. Now, in this application, I'm going to take it down to just the thickness of the aggregate, which for a finished flooring type product, like a vinyl, sheet vinyl, something like that, it wouldn't be quite adequate. And we would want to use a skim patch or feather finish in that application. But for our tile installations, this is actually the perfect product and goes you know down to a nice edge for tile is am 100 sticky like thin set or more like traditional mud not very sticky um i would say it's kind of right in, in between a deck mud and a fat mud um as you can see it, it sticks to my trowel but as I start to rod this off, you'll notice that the material itself, so it sticks on my trowel fairly well, which is an advantage when I go to start patching things in because I can add material. But it's not, when I go to screed it, it doesn't drag like a thin set will drag. So I'll go ahead and screed now. So you can see it, it doesn't pull like a like a thin set would pull. take this and go back the other way now. Now I can actually start to go up. Podium, oh, one more question. Will AM100 stick to wood or does it need a primer? So AM100 requires a concrete substrate. So if, if we're in a wood construction application, we're going to like say we're using this as a as a pre-float or a or a the word I'm trying to think of a a pre-slope that we would have to put down a piece of 
like quarter inch or half inch wonder board or, or cement backer board. And then our AIM 100 will stick to it. It will not stick to wood or sheetrock or, or any of those things. We need a concrete substrate or cementitious substrate. This is where the AM100 is, is just sticky enough that I can come in here and patch those in. But notice it's not dragging a whole lot. In full disclosure, I am not a mud mechanic. I did not grow up floating walls. And that's pretty good for a guy who's never actually floated a wall. William, Captain Ford has a question. Could you use Ardex 8 plus 9 as a primer for AM100? No, we need to be in direct contact. So, so AM100 will always require to be in direct contact to a concrete substrate. So we don't want anything between it. We don't want waterproofing. And when we're talking about waterproofing, we always want our waterproofing to be as, as close to the tile work as possible so that, you know, water, you know, typically a waterproofing like RX8 plus 9 can also act as an anti-fracture. So you know, we always want that as close to the top as we can, and that way um, we're preventing the, the substrate from being um, saturated with water. So 8 plus 9 should be installed on top of the AM100, not below it, correct? Correct, and with AM100, that's the beauty of it, is that this product can be, you can put 8 plus 9 over top of it, in as little as two hours or um, directly install tile on it in as little as two hours. This is a rapid setting, rapid curing product that allows us to proceed very, very quickly with our installation. So where I like to see AM100 used or where I actually do see it used quite a bit is, you know, on TI work or you show up on the job and you don't know you know, you get there and suddenly now you have to meet an existing elevation. So how do we do that and still return it to full use, you know, at the, at the beginning of the day? So, or at the end of the day. So AIM 100 allows us to go in, slope, and in as little as two hours, we can be tiling over top of that, you know, using a rapid setting product and a rapid setting grout. We can return that entire installation back to service in as little as, you know, six hours complete ready for foot traffic. Thank you, William. We have a, a couple more questions regarding 8 plus 9 and AM100. The okay. first is, what is the working time of AM100? So it is a rapid setting product. Um, we're going to have working time with it about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, my trick with AM100 is to rough place it like I've done here and then watch it and come back to it in about 15 or 20 minutes. And then I would take my steel trowel and I would close this surface. But at this point right now, I don't want to start worrying about these small imperfections. I just leave them because if I start messing with this now, I, I'm going to start pulling material. If I go with a really light hand, you know, I can, but I like to actually let it kind of flash off and then come in and close this in about 15 or 20 minutes, which is our working time is about 15 minutes. Of course, that's going to depend on your, you know, job site conditions. If it's, you know, hot in Phoenix, Arizona, middle of summer, that's going to be a little shorter. You're up in Anchorage, Alaska, probably going to be a little longer. 
Thank you, William. We have a couple more. Um, Anonymous is asking if we can prime wood with eight plus nine and then install AM100 on top of that. OK, so uh, again, our, our AM100 has to be in direct contact with a concrete surface. So whether that's a cement backer board or whether that's an actual concrete substrate, we, we have to be in contact with that concrete. We can't go on top of, you, you know, a, a fiber rocker or, or some other sort of backer board. We need to be in, in direct contact. So that's important. And also, um, you know, we also want to always have our waterproofing as close to the tile work as possible. That keeps our entire assembly from being saturated with water. Thank you, William. Some more questions. Would you recommend AM100 to fix bows from framing over foam board for tile prep? So again, if we have a cementitious surface, um, if that if that backer board has a cementitious surface to it, yes, we can apply, but we cannot exceed a quarter of an inch in that type of an installation if it's over um, like a foam backer. If it's over a cement backer board and there's a bow in the framing, that's exactly what AM100 is used for, is to, is to true things, fix things up. Um, let's say you're doing an exterior veneer, and if your column was just just a little bit bigger, you, you'd work out to be full tiles or, or full pieces of stone, you could use AM100 to true that up, or say your column was just out of square, out of plumb a little bit, you could use AM100 to square that up. Thank you, William. Uh, another question, how thick does AM100 need to be when installed over wire lath for a brown coat application? Uh, so for a scratch and brown, um, we're going to go directly over top of the wire, like if we're doing like an exterior veneer installation, we're going to go directly over top of that wire and we can just go the minimum thickness of a quarter inch over that wire and scratch that and then come back with our brown. Or, or you could do it as a single step too. Either way. Thank you. Is there a approved method to extend the working time of AM100? Uh, well, it would be the same recommendation that we have anytime that you're working in a hot environment, you know, Always, if you can, keep your package, your bag material cool and out of direct sunlight. Use as cold of water as possible. Sometimes we get into this when we're doing large self-leveling installations. We'll actually float blocks of ice in our mixed water to cool down the mixed water, and that's going to extend your working time as well. The whole advantage of, of 8 plus 9 is that it is rapid setting. That's, that's one of its key features is it allows you to, you know, fix anything that's out of true, ramp something to meet an existing flooring, make a pre-slope for a shower so that then you could actually get your waterproofing down. And that's a huge advantage so that you're not held up with any time. Thank you, William. One more question on AM100. Can it be used on the exterior? Absolutely. A, that is a great question because AM100, and, and that's one of the reasons I really like this product, you can use it almost anywhere, interior, exterior, commercial, residential, submerged applications. So I've actually gone out on pool installations where they're doing just the water line and the tile installer is, is actually building out so that when they come in with a plaster coat, he builds it out with AM100. Then he waterproofs it with eight plus nine, and that's stacked as an anti-fracture, and then he installs his tile, and then they bring that pool plaster up to it. And so it's in a submerged application. So absolutely, we can be used interior, exterior, submerged, commercial, residential. I mean, it's, it's literally one of my favorite products. So I think we'll start transitioning into our Self-leveling products. All right. So before we actually start the installation of our self-leveling underlayment, 
there's a couple tools and some things that we need to talk about. So we're going to start with our primer because that is where we're starting. We always want to go through and do our priming first. So we have the P51 that Mark talked about because we have a wood substrate and a concrete substrate. So P51 can be used on both of these porous substrates. And then we have our Ardex P4. So P4 is our multi-purpose primer that can be used on porous and non-porous installations. So it's important to note that the P4 goes on with a foam roller. I like to say thin to win. Now our P51 goes in with an exploded tip broom and we're going to scrub that into the surface. So that's important to know. We don't use a roller when we're talking about P51. We always want to broom that into the surface. So once we have our primer down, the next thing I like to do is I like to go around and actually do all of my caulking. So I like to just use an acrylic latex caulk. Some people like to use spray foam. In our installations, we actually have perimeter isolation uh, foam along our edges, and then we simply just caulk that in. Now, when we get ready to mix our material, Artex makes a couple different mixers. So this strange looking football mixer is actually shaped to match the contour of the Artex barrel. So it's important to, to use this. If you're using an Artex barrel, you want to use the correct T1 mixer. Now tonight, we're going to be mixing in the Artex six gallon buckets. So that's where the T2 mixer works perfectly because the continuous ring is going to allow us to keep so that we don't have any dry spots at the bottom of our bucket. So it is important to use the correct mixer. Also very important to use proper dust control. You know, with the new OSHA silica standards that are out, very, very important to use dust control. So this is the Artix dust free. It'll snap onto our Artix mixing barrel or a five gallon or six gallon bucket, hooked to a vacuum, and will provide you with proper protection from airborne silica. Let's talk about our drill for a second. So drill speed is important. And I've, you know, I come from an installation standpoint myself. And one of the toughest things for me, self-leveling, I was never successful with self-leveling because I was using my good mud drill to mix, you know, my good mortar drill. Because I'd always been taught slow and low, and you don't want a lot of speed, and you don't want to whip a bunch of air into it. Self-leveling actually needs that speed to activate the polymers. We want a minimum of 650 RPMs. And, you know, the drill that we're using, I think is an 850. This, this drill here will actually do 1200 RPM. The more speed you can have, the more power you can have is actually going to make that self leveler flow even better. So once we've got it mixed properly, we do have a couple tools that make the job easier. This is a gauge rake, and this will actually, these skis are adjustable so that we can adjust how much material we leave behind. Now on our installation, we're actually not going to be using the gauge rake because I've done something called pinning the floor. So I'll show you that. This is called the Artex Smoother. Now what the Smoother does is it actually breaks the surface tension and allows the self leveler to flow out. So we'll show that here in just a second. Now the one final thing we have is cleats. Super, super important. We have to have cleats on. We, we don't want a regular shoe that's going to displace all of that material. We want a cleat that's going to stand us up out of the material. I've done pours in these in these soccer shoes, you know, two inches deep where we're walking through it, but the material will heal back together. And that's important to know because we are going to walk in it. So I think that's another thing where I was always a little bit um, off before was that I thought self leveling that I would trowel it out there and I would reach out there and trowel. But we actually walk in the material and that's why we need to have the soccer shoes to stand up in the material. And I, it's really weird. 
you know, we love to go out on job sites and we love to do job sites trainings because, you know, getting someone to walk in material, we've been taught all of our lives, don't wet, walk in the wet mud. And here we are, we're going to walk in the wet mud. So, William, real quick. Kevin Ford asked the question, does Arctic sell these tools? Yes, so everything except for the drill and um, and my soccer cleats, <laughs> we sell everything else. So we have our two substrates. Any other questions, Chris? Not at this moment. So we have our two substrates here. This is a concrete substrate. It's already been pre-primed with P51 on this side. We have our P4 primer on this side. Now on the other side here, we have a concrete sub, or sorry, a wood substrate that is already pre-primed with P51 and then P4 on the other side. So what we have going on here, Aaron, if you'll pull in just a little bit, we have an unlevel substrate. So see that I can slide my hand underneath my level. So, you know, could I set tile on that? You know, the industry specifications say that our substrate must meet in accordance with our tile. If our tile is bigger than 15 inches on any one side, our substrate must meet an eighth inch in 10 feet. Now, if our tile is less than 15 inches on any one, you know, less than 15 inches, we can have a quarter inch in 10 feet. So here, if I'm able to slide my entire hand under there, that's about, uh, about five eighths of an inch. So what we've done in this situation is we've used the Ardex Artipegs. So the Artipegs allow us to use a laser, to use a laser and as you can see, now all we have to do is cut that off. We peel these off, which I'm gonna do right now, and we'll stick them directly to the substrate. So I've already done that here. And now if I put my level on, Aaron, can you get a look at the bubble right here? So our bubble is perfectly level. Now we don't have to always level a floor and on our wood substrate, what we created, instead of having a hump in the middle of the floor like we have here, we're actually tapering. So, so we're gonna go ahead and install our artipegs really quick. So we simply just cut those off. It's really easy. They just have a peel and stick tab to them. Stick them down. Then we'll stick one about right there. Now, what I like to do is, Aaron, if you can come in here just a little bit, actually probably easier to show on this one. Um, what I like to do is just come in with my knife, cut that off. So it looks like I go just a sliver more. There we go. Then I'll do the same thing on this other one here. So just like that. So this one is ready to pour. Now on our wood substrate, I have another trick that I like to use. So our trick on the wood substrate, you know, a lot of guys will use a backer board. But here, what our situation is here is that we're simply out of level. We're out of level by about, hmm, probably about three eighths of an inch out of level. So imagine if we had a door on this other side over here and we were having to meet, say an existing elevation, like a doorway meeting into hardwood and we couldn't, we couldn't add a lot of height here. So putting on a backer board, if you look here, well, I've already gone through and I've set screws to be my indicators, but the screw is actually below the elevation of my backer board. So what would I do in that situation? Liquid backer board 
has a minimum thickness of an eighth of an inch, which is what this screw is set at. Now backer board, if we switch to this other side, you'll notice here that my screw is higher. And that's because to, to level out this floor, I actually need to raise this up. Well, how would I do that with backer board? I can't. So that's where self leveling comes in. And I'll show you the trick that I use here. So I use- William, real quick. Yes. We have, we have questions here before we go too much further. Oh. Uh, a couple of these are multi-part. Where do you purchase the Ardex Artipegs? And are they made by Ardex? And would they cut with scissors? Oh, you betcha. Ryan, would you mind throwing me a pair of Artex shears? So I'll just grab one. So the Artex Artipeg is it's just plastic with a two-phase tape on it. And absolutely, shears are very nice because, you know, they'll just, whatever length I needed. I do like using a knife because I can really just shave off the smallest little sliver with a knife if I needed to. So either, either one will work. Um, any Artex distributor can get the Artex Artipegs. So they're available through any Artex distributor. Thank you. Uh, next question for, from Tristan. How far apart do you place the Artipegs? Oh, that's a really good question. So I typically like to go every two to three feet. You know, if it's a small space where I've really got some wonky stuff going on, you know, a two foot grid is really nice. Um, also, then I can put my, whether I'm using the screw method or the Artipeg method, you know, I, if I don't have a laser, I can actually just use my level and level, or level out the screws using a, an actual bubble level. Or if I wanted and I have a laser, I can use a laser as well. So Chris, our mud is here. So we're gonna go ahead and take the balance of those after we finish up this, sex, this section. So with the screw method, one thing that I do really quick, I just take some high-vis marker paint. I'll throw these guys in a box. I'll just hit them with, just spray them, like throw them in a bucket or a box and just spray them real quick. Then now when I go to actually set the screws, What I've done is I've actually put a piece of tape. So can you guys see here, there's a piece of tape and I have two lines. Now, a lot of guys will put one line where their laser is gonna be at, but I find, if you come from this side, Aaron, you'll probably be able to see my laser a little better. What I find is that um, if I put a line on each side and then I screw down this screw, there so two lines and I can actually get the laser line right beneath between that and how I set that was I used an eighth inch shim underneath my laser set my laser there and then set zero right at so you can see it's right between my lines so I'll just set this Last one. I do like to keep them about six inches from the wall. So now, of course, we'll get our laser out of here so we don't get any self leveler on that. I did want to talk about our perimeter isolation foam real quick. Here I use the Ardex or Gutiar um, UD146. What's really nice about that is it has this peel and stick tab that when installed actually, actually creates a seal. Thank you, sir. Ah, we forgot something over here. We've got a toilet flange to cover. So what I like to do with a toilet flange I actually like to 
take a little bit of expansion foam or sometimes this, this is called sill foam sometimes. So guys, go through your project. I like to caulk everything. My goal when I do a self-leveling job is not to have a single leak. I want to check everything, make sure that I don't have, you know, if I've got seams in the plywood and I need to put down some patch or some rapid thin set to fill those. If I need to do some caulking, I don't want to have a single leak. So we're ready to actually pour our material. So here we have the Ardex liquid backer board. So at this is the point where we're going to step in the material. This is where the soccer shoes are really handy or cleats. Now, I know some self leveling companies and some guys like to have like the slip on metal cleats. Me personally, I don't like those that much. The reason being is that when we have um, when we have like say electric wires, you know, in-floor radiant heat, you can get into a situation you wouldn't want metal spikes and actually damage those wires. So that's why I like the soccer shoes. We don't have to worry about anything there. So I've got my my screws are placed. This is why I like to Aaron, can you show this one right here. This is why I like to hit them with the high vis paint is so that I can see them. Now, when we're doing proper self leveling, we're always going to start against the wall. And we're going to come out in a fan motion. So we never want to start in the middle and try to fix something. We're always going to start <clears throat> at our wall and fan away. So we just have this little corner up here. What I like about the smoother is I can use it to push some material. Now imagine we have to plan our job accordingly so that we're working our way out of the room. So I'm working towards the doorway. I can go ahead and step out of the doorway. And it's important to let the tools do the work for you. So once I've broken that surface tension, the material will actually continue to flow out. So now we're ready to, so liquid backer board, again, the coverage on that is 32 square feet, 32 and a half square feet at a quarter of an inch. So here, you know, we had a little out of level situation that we were rectifying, we were almost like eighth inch on this side, a little more three eighths on this side. And now we have a flat sub substrate to set our tile on. So now we'll transition to our concrete substrate. Chris, do we have any questions on liquid backer board at this point? Yes, William, uh, we do. What type of laser do you recommend for this application? Well, I, I was actually using two different lasers. Um, the laser that I was, I like a 360 laser, you know, one that's, that shoots a, a beam all the way around. So on this side, I had a laser that was shooting out the top. Now, this laser, it happens to shoot the image, the laser beam out the bottom. 
that's kind of handy because as I go to trim things off, I don't have to adjust, you know, and figure out what I'm doing. The other one where I'm going on to screw, you know, setting the wood screws and I use the piece of tape, that's fine. If I do you had a regular laser that shot the top, I would have to have like a story stick that would tell me what my elevation was that I was shooting for. Thank you for that. Kevin Ford uh, asked, is there an approved method by Ardex to pour self leveler to create a slope? For example, by withho withholding a portion of the water. So, so the self leveler itself, it's a great question and that's what we've done here. So we can actually create up to a 2% slope with self leveling cement because it is cement, it's not water, it's not going to continue to flow. So we can actually place it as long as we have some sort of indication of what our heights are, which is why it's really nice to do these artipegs and or the screws, depending on what substrate you have. So we can create a slope as long as we have an indication of what that slope is. Thank you, William. Will the spike roller work as well? as opposed to the blade. So <clears throat> the spike roller is is an amazing tool. Now it does have some disadvantages that if you're leveling over about a quarter of an inch, five sixteenths, you get up to three eighths, it starts actually pushing material. Also, if we're going over in floor radiant heat, it doesn't really like to go over the wires very well. Or if we've properly pinned our floor like we have here, then it doesn't it doesn't go over the pins very well. So I personally like a smoother. I do like the pin roller or spike roller if if we're doing a cap. Say we're doing a quarter inch cap over the entire area, the spike roller is great. Thank you. One last quick one. Is the one eighth inch shim under the laser because of the minimum thickness of the liquid backer board? Exactly. Yeah, that's very astute. So what I did was I set that laser at the high point in the room and then added an eighth inch for my self leveler because that is the minimum thickness of liquid backer board. And then I set my zero with a piece of tape at that zero point of an eighth of an inch. So now all my screws would be set at that same level plane. So we've got our our TL1000 here mixed up. Now TL1000 is only for concrete substrates. So we have our concrete substrate here. We're going to go ahead and pour out. And again, with our smoother, we can move our material around. Now it's always important to plan your strategy. Where's the door? You're going to work from the farthest point and work out the door. So I know that my doorway's there, so I'm going to go ahead and work that direction. So what I like to do is just kind of rough place some material so I have a little bit to work with. And then there we go. So now what I'm going to do is simply work my way out of the room. step out the door. Remember, we're always going to start at a wall.
So as you can see, it didn't take us much time at all to pour the self-leveling. Liquid backer board, you have between eight and 12 minutes open edge time, meaning to get the next bag into it, we want to keep it, you know, as as little as possible, or, you know, down to about eight to 10 minutes. Now, TO-1000 is a little bit shorter than that, but as you can see, it goes really, really quick. So now we have a perfectly flat substrate and our AM100, remember I said about 15, 20 minutes to, to let it kind of kick off. So actually, I think our 15 minutes is done here. this AM100, I can actually feel the heat coming off the material at the thickness, you know, at the thicker part. I can also take a sponge if I wanted and kind of use that to close the surface up. And that'll just help me dress that off. Either one of these would be perfectly fine to accept tile. William, we have one more question about liquid backer board. All righty. Or two, actually. For, from Tristan, should tile be set directly to liquid backer board, or should there be some sort of crack isolation or uncoupling membrane set over liquid backer board prior to tile installation? So that's a really good question. So with an uncoupling membrane, it's going to act much like the cement backer board that we have here or any other backer board. It's going to follow that substrate, right? So if there's a hump in the substrate, an uncoupling membrane is going to follow that same hump. The beauty of a self-leveling cement or underlayment is that it's going to take those, you know, undulations out of the subfloor. And, and that's something that a backer board or an uncoupling doesn't do. So we always want to have our substrate meet the TCNA standards for the size of our tile. So an eighth inch in 10 feet for tiles bigger than 15 inches or a quarter inch in 10 feet for tiles smaller than 15 inches. And then L liquid backer board or LBB does not require a primer over top of it. You can set tile directly to it. If you wanted a waterproof application, because again, we always want our waterproofing as close to the tile work as possible, we could apply a waterproof membrane or set tile over this in as little as six to eight hours over liquid backer board. Thank you, William. Uh, one last question. What type of pumps can we use with these self-leveling underlayments? <laughs> if you have a big job, that's a really cool thing about Artix is that we have our Artiflow system. So, you know, if you have a job, you know, 10,000 feet, we can do that with barrels and what we call our rover, which attaches to the barrel and puts it on casters so that you can roll it around. I mean, I've seen guys, a crew of four or five guys do 10,000 square feet with two rovers and five guys. Now you start getting bigger to that 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 square feet. Yes, we do have our Artiflow system that is available. We actually have a pump technician that goes out and will train your crew on how to do that. That is going to be on those larger type jobs, but a pump can be used with these self-leveling underlayments. Thank you, William. There's no questions at this time. All right. So again, now we have two beautifully flat substrates that are ready to receive tile. And uh, that's going to do it for our presentation tonight. If anyone has any questions, please be sure to reach out to us. Um, we're going to throw up our technical contact number, or you can always reach out to your local Artex Style and Stone sales professional. My name is William White. I just wanted to thank you for joining us tonight.